Hey gang, Professor McElroy here, uh, Digital Animation and FX2. Uh, we're into week three, learning module three. Good job so far on the premiere chapters, the uh, kind of basics of video splicing and editing and transitions and applying effects to and creating in essence uh, a storyboard, a story uh, that I use primarily for uh, social media advertising for short clips, mm, three seconds, five seconds, seven seconds of a video clip that I use to build brands. And so Premiere is awesome for that. Uh, I shoot a lot of the film on my iPhone, a little bit on my iPad, splice it up, put it together, upload it to a YouTube channel and use it for branding purposes. And, uh, and After Effects is what we're gonna take a look at tonight. We're just gonna kind of scratch the surface on the layout of it. If you have been lucky enough to uh, been part of the uh, Adobe Animate class, then this will really look familiar to you. And I use it a lot of the same ways I use Adobe Animate. Uh, uh, 2D vector-based animations uh, with transitions and tweening and dissolving and fading and that sort of thing for intro screens like introduction of logo and kind of any kind of out screens, whether it be credits or social media icons or any text I want to introduce at the end of my animation, my video clip, uh, I use After Effects for. And it works seamlessly with Premiere. You can actually upload, just drag and drop your uh, After Effects file right into your library in Premiere. It overlays as a video layer. Uh, you can put it anywhere you want in your clip, uh, which is a really great thing. I find it to be uh, pretty easy to use once you've been introduced to a timeline, keyframes, and that sort of thing. Uh, keeping in mind that a lot of the Premiere and After Effects work I do is for branding purposes, very short clip social media uploads. Uh, <clears throat> lots of people also use it for YouTube. If they're kind of like an influencer or they post YouTube videos, they'll animate their logo, they'll, lay, they'll layer some text over the top in different parts of the video. Uh, I follow a few people on YouTube. And they have really nice identity and branding on their video. And they do some animations, some After Effects animations. And then they do some zooming and cropping and transitions from their videos. <clears throat> Many of them are cut screen, kind of like we did last week, where it's just one clip into the next, into the next, into the next, uh, without a dissolved transition or shutters or any kind of transitions. Uh, so it's a, these two tools, I see transitioning. Uh, into an iPad environment here where you can really take advantage of Premiere and After Effects and become more of a social media uh, influencer, the ability to take video, vector-based graphics, do transitions, bring, tell a story very easily, uh, shooting on a phone or a, a tablet or anything like that. Lots of people use GoPros uh, and that sort of thing, importing it in, splicing it up, transitions, uh, filter effects, uh, and animating branding in the intro and kind of the outro screen. So uh, I've started to dabble a little bit in that uh, in the hopes to post some videos, I think in the near future of some things I like to do. And I'm gonna do it, uh, kind of give it as a case study with YouTube, kind of see how it works from an affiliation standpoint. So hopefully I can bring that into the classroom beyond just the uh, creating short clips for social media posting uh, out there for the world to see. Uh, so that's kind of how I do it. And so we're going to spend a little time uh, this evening kind of taking a look at After Effects, uh, kind of see how it works, kind of touch it a little bit, take a look at where the properties are, where the effects are, timelines, how they work, keyframes, that sort of thing. Uh, a couple of you, we only have a few in the class, but a couple of you have been exposed to Adobe Animate before. So this timeline and keyframe environment will look very comfortable to you. And so I'll kind of show you how I use it. And we'll build upon uh, the New Balance little short social media clip I was working on last week as the lecture. So we'll animate the logo in and we'll do some different things, import the After Effects into Premiere, kind of show you how they interact as files and kind of give you an idea how this can quickly become a branding tool for you in a multimedia environment, whether for your uh, current employer or even a prospective employer. So 
hopefully you'll see some value even in just dabbling in After Effects a little bit. Like I said, if you have experience with Animate, timeline and keyframes will look comfortable to you. So I think you'll enjoy the process of After Effects. Uh, if I'm doing 2D animation and it's for web banners and more static driven images, I'll use Animate in this environment. Uh, but when I'm doing more social video clips, short videos for websites, embedding things uh, that are video-based, kinetic, moving by nature, 3D animations, that sort of thing, I'll use Premiere and After Effects. So uh, animate for the 2D static, more static elements, and Premiere and After Effects for the more movie-driven or video-driven or what they call long-frame branding. So, okay. So that brings us to our little demonstration for this evening. Take us 45 minutes or so, maybe an hour, just to kind of go over some of the tricks of the trade, kind of what's going on in After Effects, why you should play around with it a little bit and kind of be exposed to it uh, so you know what it is and you know of it as a tool that's best used for whatever certain case scenarios you're doing for a client. Uh, lots of students end up doing kind of design you know, start picking up clients and then eventually maybe migrate it into their own design business, or they go to work for an ad agency or corporations, a big firm, uh, and use their design skills in more of a permanent or full-time application. So uh, like I said, these tools all kind of have their own media and application, and they all kind of uh, do their thing for certain applications. So it's getting exposed to uh, the toolbar, the terminology, where things are located, how they interact uh, as a media, and then finding the best application for the client's needs uh, that, you, that you can use that has the best output. Uh, and a, the beauty about Adobe is, is that a subscription you know, to a, a CC includes all of the applications. So it's practicing and playing and getting comfortable with and being exposed to all the different things uh, that you can do with it uh, based on what your output is, what your final product is. So, all right, so we'll get into our New Balance video. We'll, we'll tinker around a little bit in After Effects so we can talk about the different uh, palettes, where things are located, what they look like, uh, how I use it as a professional designer and how it will help you to increase your brand application, what you offer as a brand tool, and also uh, to help you with your final project because we'll be doing a logo animation into a short movie clip, social media clip that you edit in Premiere and you import the logo animation in from After Effects. So we'll kind of add the last little piece of the puzzle for some interactive branding uh, through uh, Premiere and After Effects. Okay, so uh, some of you that have me before for some of the different classes, we may have mentioned uh, this resource before, uh, but for those of you that maybe uh, heard it before but don't remember it or were never exposed to it before, there's a really, uh, there's a really great website out there for vector-based branding. Uh, EPS files that can be easily opened in Illustrator and saved as Illustrator files. They're transparent, they're vector, which means they're fully scalable. And they're a really great tool for uh, downloading logos that you might wanna use in a scalable environment. Animates a scalable environment, After Effects importing a logo that is vector-based brings it into a scalable environment. So when you're doing things that are brand-based that really rely on the icon, the symbolism, the thing that is the brand. Uh, you need to, at, at very best, hopefully, uh, either from the client or from creating it yourself or from downloading it from a resource, you need a vector-based version of the logo. So for me, I was looking for uh, New Balance because I was doing the animation and I was looking for the logo. And so look at all of the logos. I actually downloaded this one and changed it to white in Illustrator, but uh, they got a bunch of vector-based versions of it. And so here it is right here as a free download. You can download it, it comes in a zip file. You extract the zip file. Traditionally, it comes in an EPS format, which you'll notice right here. Sometimes you'll get a zip file in Brands of the World and it'll give you an AI file too but in this case, it's an EPS file. And so this is really important for my animation because I'm dealing with 
uh, a 2D vector environment. So I'm just gonna launch this in Illustrator real quick so you can see that this thing is a drawing, right? It's a drawing, <laughs> which means it's fully scalable. And it also means that all these points can be manipulated. So uh, I went in and downloaded that because I needed it for my animation today. You can go in here and make it white, which is what I did because remember it's gonna be transparent and it's on a black screen in essence until it's overlaid video of any kind. So I went in and just opened that thing up and I'll just save it as converted just so that I know it's different than the other one that I saved. And I'm gonna dump it into my new balance file or folder and you'll see, I'm gonna zoom out for a minute, go into my new balance folder and you'll actually see there's the original one that I had converted over and here's the new one I downloaded. And there's also a PNG, which was the, the original transparent white logo that I downloaded for my demo for uh, uh, last week for Premiere. So I'll go ahead and trash the EPS file now. So just get comfortable with terminology, file types, what you need depending on the application in all applications when you're dealing with branding, a logo specifically. Make sure that you have an EPS file or you convert it into an Illustrator file. Because even if you bring that, that logo, that brand into Photoshop, which is pixel or raster based, you wanna make sure that comes in as a smart object, something that's scalable so that when you blow that thing up, it stays crystal clear and doesn't become pixelated or blurry. So you just wanna make sure that you're using the file types that are appropriate for what you're navigating through based on the application that you're doing. Brands need to be vector-based. Uh, don't get too comfortable with downloading JPEGs, TIFFs, PNGs of logos and using them in professional applications uh, because those things are pixel-based, which means they're tied to resolution, which means scalability is a zero, which means whatever that size is. And in some cases you can get a logo at 3000 pixels wide. That's a pretty big logo but that logo still isn't gonna work if you're making an eight foot by eight foot mural for the inside of a food store or inside of a restaurant, or you're creating some environmental graphic that needs to be really big, uh, a vehicle graphic. Yeah, that's a big logo, but we need to convert that thing, redraw it, somehow get it into an EPS or AI file, Illustrator file. That way it's scalable and it's crystal clear. Traditionally logos are one or two color. You wanna make sure that those colors are vector fills just so that they're crisp and clean and scalable. So they look like they were poured into a template right with a bucket of paint, that there isn't any blurring, pixelation, softening of color. So just know that, that you need those resources when building in a professional application. I redraw a lot of logos for clients just to make sure that they're vector-based and they're crystal clear. Uh, if they don't have it, they hand me a business card and say, this is the only thing I have is the logo. Well, that doesn't really work because you want a vehicle graphic for your van that you're driving around your product in. And this business card is two by, th two by three and a half inches. And the logo is like an inch by an inch. That's not going to really work. Uh, so I end up redrawing a lot of things, recreating a lot of things, or just having them pay me to create a new logo or a rebrand of a logo. So just know in After Effects world, that's going to be imported into Premiere, vector-based logos. Uh, animate, if you take the Animation 1 class, vector-based logos. If you're importing logos in for a Photoshop advertisement, a postcard, anything that's pixel-based, that's primarily static image-driven. Remember, it's 300 of those little squares of color per inch, right, DPI. So that means the logo needs to be crystal clear and crisp and saturated and even in that environment. So just know brands need to be vector-based if at all possible. Doesn't mean there won't be a website you create and the only thing the client gives you is a little uh, scan of a logo they import in and you build their website or recreate their website in a Dreamweaver, one of the software applications we teach but you really need a vector file in order to give the best possible professional solution kind of building and going forward. Okay, now that I have the logo downloaded, converted into an AI file, even though I could have used an EPS file, I put it in my root directory folder. Remember the root directory folder, this is the folder I'm working in. 
working on with my premier project in it, my logos now, my clips, my runner clip that I spliced up for my video animation. So now I'm thinking about animating in my New Balance logo as the cut screens are panning through my runner as my runner's running down the road, right? We did all that editing last week of the uh, runner video, all the filters, the transitions, cutting the clip down to under 10 seconds, building the social media clip with these cut screens so that we could uh, eventually make an MP4, upload it to YouTube, post it on Twitter, Instagram, uh, TikTok, uh, embedded in a website for, uh, for New Balance, maybe on their Facebook page or LinkedIn or any of their social media accounts. We're just building an under 10 second brandable uh, video sequence clip story that we could use in a campaign for, in this case, New Balance. Okay, so that brings us into After Effects. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna open up After Effects because you're gonna see some things that look very similar to uh, Premiere and some things that probably will look a little bit different. Now, I'm gonna go in and just click new project because nothing's really happened yet when I do new project. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna shrink the screen a little bit too, just so that you can kind of see what's going on. I can move it down here. I'm gonna minimize uh, my Chrome and everything. So I got just my composition. Now, in essence, over here is our library area that we're gonna collect all of our assets for uh, creating an After Effects. And I use vector-based graphics for After Effects. I know in your book, they drag video clips in, they overlay logos and vector-based animations, and they create kind of this sequencing over top of video clips. But I use Premiere strictly for splicing, editing, building the story of my video clips, whether it be one clip or multiple clips. I use Premiere and its timeline for 100% of my video editing. I use After Effects strictly for vector-based graphic overlays, whether it be uh, an illustration animating over the top, whether it be the logo intro, whether it be kind of a, a post screen or an out screen where I put social media icons, I bring in created by things, I put a website address, anything that I'm creating for my uh, social media clip, I use After Effects specifically for the vector base elements. So think about social media icons, logos, some textual elements. If I want to do something slightly different with my text elements, then bringing them in into Premiere, I'll do those as well. And I'll also create After Effects clips for each section of my vector animations. So I won't build a timeline out for seven seconds because my video in Premiere is seven seconds. I may do a two second logo intro animation a two second uh, final cut screen post credits uh, After Effects. And then I may even make a middle one that maybe is a second or two that might bring in an illustration character, uh, a vector graphic that I just wanna have swipe through the screen. So I really lean on After Effects for EPS files, illustrator files and vector based graphics, things that look flat and two dimensional and solid in color to just kind of give you definition. Okay, so you're going to notice along the top some similar toolbars, right, that you've probably seen from Premiere and other uh, uh, software applications in Adobe. Things like pen tool and paintbrush and cloning and eraser tool and text tool, uh, cropping, uh, pinning, that sort of thing. Zoom in, pan across, rotate, that kind of thing. You'll notice that our library in essence is this little collection area down here with an effects control when I select something, a composition window, which is the same as the stage, the pasteboard, the artboard, uh, any of those terms, page uh, in, in design in this area right here. And then you'll also notice a series of palettes, drop downs, uh, uh, accordion menus is what they call those. And then down here, layers and a timeline. So you're seeing a lot of similar things across Adobe CC, the, the Adobe CC application. Just some slightly different uh, reasons to select uh, those elements based on what you're creating. So uh, the first thing we have to do is we have to kind of get the asset or the assets 
that we might potentially want to use inside of our After Effects animation over into our library over here. Uh, so what I like to do is I always like to start with my root directory. Uh, really in reality, I should have a folder called assets in here where I dump all my images, my vector-based graphics, all my static things uh, into the folder, including any movie clips or anything. But I chose the subdirectories just to be my Adobe Premiere auto save folders. Uh, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna take my New Balance logo. I'm gonna dump it in. Now, you're gonna notice that it's gonna ask for the application of this thing. Uh, you wanna dump it in as a composition. You wanna dump it in as footage. Uh, footage gives you the option to separate layers inside of uh, After Effects. Uh, composition basically dumps this thing as its own new video. So we wanna call it footage because we don't wanna make it its own composition. We wanna make it be an element inside of the new composition we create. Uh, you can choose uh, layer, if there were multiple layers in this thing, you could merge the layers. If there were uh, elements you wanted to group, I'm gonna do choose layer. Merge layer doesn't really matter because I don't have a background in my Illustrator file. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And you're gonna now see that my image right here, my scalable graphic appears in a thumbnail. You'll notice the vector art appears over here. We could rename it uh, New Balance logo. So we'll dump that in over there. You're going to notice right down here, we could start creating our composition. So I'm only using one element in here. I may produce or bring in some kind of light beam or something. I haven't decided if I want to draw the line uh, in After Effects and animate some kind of swipe or something, or whether I want to bring in a vector-based kind of gradient bleed light beam that we could do something in our composition as well. Knowing that the black background here means transparent, right? There isn't a video behind it or any kind of solid graphic behind it. So when we bring our After Effects file into Premiere, it plays really nicely. So we'll just start with our logo. We can always bring in things later. I'm gonna go ahead and add a, our composition and we're gonna call it New Balance Logo Intro. And we're gonna stick with our, in essence, 30 frames per second to line up with our uh, our video clip that we have in Premiere. We'll kind of keep the 16 by nine ratio. We're gonna keep the high definition with square pixels. This is all default. Black is the same background as Premiere. So we're gonna keep that. So there is, isn't a difference of appearance as you're working in After Effects and then navigate into the Premiere environment. So we're gonna go ahead and click okay. I'm gonna do the minus, uh, command minus, just so that you get a good breath of what's going on here. Uh, I have my timeline here. I'm gonna shrink this a little bit and I'm gonna pinch this a little bit just so that you get an idea of what's going on here. This is gonna be my, my source, my layers. This is gonna be where my animation takes place just so that you get kind of comfortable with the environment. Got that dragged in. Okay, so now you're gonna notice, I'm gonna shrink the, I'm gonna zoom this in a little bit just so that we can see the seconds, right? Because our premiere video, and this is why storyboarding becomes so important. Our premiere video was under 10 seconds. I think we got it under 10 seconds last week. So we know our playhead, we can't go any longer or we shouldn't go any longer. We can, we shouldn't go any longer than the 10 seconds because that's the 10 seconds that our video clip runs in our spliced story that we're trying to tell, our, our branding, our campaign, our runner video clip that we edited. I like to go one step further and say my intro may be two seconds into my 10 second video, animating my logo in first two seconds, save that as my uh, intro and then create a new composition and make that new balance uh, outro. And then I can do my credits or my social media icons or anything that I wanna animate in at the end of the clip, whether it be just the web address, the hashtag call out for what we're, uh, our campaign we're doing. Uh, there's all kinds of things in outro screens and social media. You really should start kind of being be aware of, feed the old brain library with what's happening in the world as it relates to the, uh, uh, the branding of the social media, the kinetic campaigning 
of what brands are doing out in social media. My wife's addicted to TikTok for some reason. And so now brown, brands are starting to use TikTok as a brandable tool, a social media tool. It's free. You can post stuff. It gets people to understand who you are, want to buy the product, that sort of thing. So as a, even as a designer, professional designer, who's been doing this thing for 25 years, I'm still trying to stay up to speed with learning the latest techniques for selling products and services and motion, short clips, social media, embedding things uh, is all a product of what people are doing now that in essence, in some cases costs zero dollars and can really generate a revenue stream for you that you wouldn't have been able to do before. So, okay. So we have our new balancing logo in there. We have our uh, uh, logo embedded there. Uh, me, I, like I said, we should have had an assets folder in our New Balance root directory, but I'm going to create one now and just dump my logo in there just so that my composition is outside of the assets that I'm using. So you'll notice uh, that my logo is now embedded in that folder. That's just best practices when you're gathering images and assets and other things you're using for your design. You should have a subfolder a subdirectory to your root directory or your client folder where you dump your video clips, your static images, photos you took, uh, branding elements like illustrations or the logo itself. There should be some level of subdirectory and asset folder. Before we go any further, I'm just gonna do a save real quick and I'm gonna dump it into my uh, New Balance folder just so that we're, so logo intro just so that best practice, we get that AEP file, that uh, After Effects project saved into the folder. And so just for the sake of the process, you double click on it, you're gonna notice the slight change in icon and color, the project, Premiere project versus the After Effects project, just so that you're starting to see iconography, uh, extension to files and that sort of thing. So you start learning that process. Okay, so we're gonna take our uh, logo and we're just gonna drop this thing and you'll notice there's some smart guides. So I'm gonna drop it right in the middle there. Uh, I'm gonna zoom, I'm gonna get in here. I'm gonna hold down shift. I'm just gonna scale this thing up a little bit. So we have it in our placement where we need it, where we want it, uh, kind of get this thing positioned. You'll notice that our timeline down here, nothing is happening yet. Uh, we just placed our logo kind of in its center screen. Now, it's got smart guides, it's got bounding boxes, it's got the basic tools and everything up here uh, that gets us started in our vector-based environment. Uh, if I was doing more assets, I would dump those all in before I start composition. And just like Premiere or just like Animate, I like to get all of my layers in or my assets in at keyframe zero comma zero or uh, zero second in essence. Uh, so that I can build all my layers and my assets before I start doing stuff with them. But for this case, I'm only doing a logo animation introduction so you can see how it works. Bring it into Premiere, start showing you kind of what happens, how these two kind of uh, software applications interact and work together and play play nice as a, as a visual communication tool or set of tools. Okay, uh, so we got our logo in there and we're actually going to import the logo a couple of times, but we're gonna animate different things on top of each other. So you can kind of see how After Effects works and how, uh, and how you can build some very dramatic elements for a two second intro screen uh, that you then can import into Premiere. So when you bring your logo in, you're gonna notice that it gets dropped in its own layer. And if I click this little accordion, in essence, this little triangle, it kicks us out and it gives us a transform uh, palette uh, that is separate from any effects that I apply to the image itself, which we will do, but we're going to build some animation in first before we apply some transition effects and that sort of thing, just to kind of get your bearings with, you know, what's happening. So when I bring things in, I traditionally animate them first, and then I apply my effects to the image assets or the image presets. Uh, once I've done the transition animations, the transforms, the opacity, the scale, the positioning, those sorts of things in my screen. And remember, I'm doing those all in a two second environment. I've storyboarded this out and I want the first two seconds to be my logo kind of animation that will come in an overlay from my premiere uh, cuts, my, my screen cuts 
that I created in my 10 second social media video. Okay, so traditionally for me, I start to play around with these things very first. Uh, so the things I wanna do is like bring it in, fade it in, get it in its final position, pulse it, pulse it ripple it, explode it, expand it, that sort of thing. Because remember, this is transparent, so I can actually have videos going on behind the screen. So you got to kind of think of the uh, storyboarding in a way that you're bringing vector graphics into overlays of video clips, because uh, oftentimes there isn't black screen or transparent screen in the intro. Sometimes there is for drama, but more times than not, the logo is being brought in or the intro elements are being brought in on top of video clips that you already spliced inside your premiere uh, project. Okay, so the first thing I wanna probably do is I wanna do positioning. Uh, I wanna bring this thing in, drop it in the middle, and then kind of take it from there. So I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down shift and I'll take this thing just off the screen. And then I'm gonna hit this little time watch or this uh, keyframe dropper into my timeline at zero comma zero, which you'll see up here, which is our current time. So the positioning is an X and Y coordinate uh, over and then down. So you'll notice it's over 960, but it's up a negative 192 pixels. So it's off the screen. And so I'm gonna hit the little time ticker and it's gonna drop a little keyframe down there. And then I'm gonna move my positioning of this thing over to about the one second. And you're gonna notice that it's gonna be one second right there. So at one second, I'm gonna drop another keyframe. And at that keyframe, I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna bring this back in to my center position. And you're gonna notice that this thing is now animating off the screen and it's gonna be dropped at one second in the middle of my screen. And then I'm gonna take my keyframe, my timeline tracker. I'm gonna drop this thing at two seconds. I'm gonna drop another position. And at that position, I'm gonna hold down shift. I'm gonna take it just off the screen. And you're gonna notice that I'm really trying to make sure that it's just barely off the screen to maximize the timing on my animation. And yes, there's transparency around the bounding box. So you can actually see there's part of the bounding box on the screen and part of the bounding box when it goes off the screen. That's okay because uh, those are transparent. So I'm just visualizing the logo itself and its placement on the screen. Okay, so we have this thing animating in. And so I'm actually gonna take my shift key and I'm gonna select all three of the keyframes. The reason I'm gonna select all three of the keyframes is I'm gonna go in here. Now that I have all three keyframes selected from a positioning standpoint, I'm gonna go in and with my keyframe assist, I'm gonna turn on what's called easing. And easing means right now the animation. So let's just show you the animation one more time. The animation is pretty much just standard speed. Like you, and if I don't stop it, it just goes right through the screen, right? There's no, uh, there's no gradual into the screen and gradual out or speed up, speed down or anything like that. It's just a constant pace. Well, they have this thing called ease, which means it's gonna speed up slowly till it gets to the center positioning. And then it's gonna kind of speed up and slow down as it goes off the screen. So you're gonna notice these little, uh, these little hourglasses up here so that this thing now is gonna actually speed up to its start point, speed up and then slow down at the end. It's a subtle thing in a two second environment, but as you kind of see it and you can actually see the ease when you're over further period of time, like four or five or six seconds, where it's a slow burst to its position. It stays in its position for a second or so, and then it slow bursts out of the screen. So it speeds up then slows down as it gets off to the edge. So it kind of has a bell curve of its speed. Uh, it's a good thing. What I'm doing is I'm actually gonna kind of fade this thing into 100% at its position. 
and then I'm going to fade it to 0% off both edges. The reason I'm doing that is I'm actually going to introduce another logo and have it explode in the center screen as an overlay of the center position logo to give it some drama for my logo intro. Just kind of sh show you how you can overlay graphics multiple copies of the same graphic, kind of like you would in Photoshop with the same image, applying different effects to the image and using different filter uh, effects and then changing the layer opacity technique to be like a multiply or an overlay. Uh, same kind of technique. I'm just doing it with static vector graphics inside After Effects. So we drop that in. So now I'm gonna take my tracker uh, back. I could hit the space bar and you can see it animate kind of pauses. You see how it speeds up and then slows down. You can really see it there, pauses and then kind of speeds up off the screen. Uh, so it's got that nice ease going on. So I'm gonna go in now and I think I want to at zero comma zero, I wanna drop in the opacity. So I'm gonna click the opacity. I'm gonna crank this thing down to zero. So right now it's opacity zero across the whole thing because I haven't told it at one second to put in a marker and change that opacity back up to 100%. So now you're gonna see this thing's gonna fade in. It's gonna fade in, pause for a second. And now it's, see how it's gonna stay faded in? Cause I didn't drop another keyframe. I'm gonna drop another keyframe. I'm gonna drop it in there. I'm gonna crank it back down to zero. Now we'll hit our space bar. There it is fading in, fading out. It has that slight ease or speed up and speed down of its process. I could hold down shift. I could select these. I could add a slight ease to the fade, the opacity change, which if you're gonna ease one thing, you should ease all things. So that way they have a consistency of pace across the transition, just so that you can see how this thing's going. So now we have that fade in, fade out. Remember black's transparent. So this could overlay beautifully over top of our video clips that we spliced in seven, eight, nine, ten 10 seconds. All right, so. Now we have this thing fading in and fading out. I think I wanna bring a new copy of this thing in and put it right on top of itself at one second. So you see? One second is where it pauses right in the middle here. I'm gonna go in and now untuck or tuck in the accordion of my effects because I can go back in later and I can drop in some more uh, elements, effects, things appearing over here, transitions, that sort of thing. We can bring those in a little bit later. So let's bring our logo in. We're gonna drop another copy of it. I'm gonna drop it in right there. I'm gonna uh, use my shift key. I'm gonna scale this thing up. I'm gonna drop it in right over the top there. So now you'll see this thing actually comes in, pauses there and keeps going, right? And so I can hit my space bar and you'll see it pauses and then keeps going. And so my storyboard is I'm telling this thing, I think I'm gonna bring it in. So let's check out our timeline now. And remember we have our, so if I untuck this, we have our anchor points of where we want things to drop and pause based on the timeline. So my position isn't gonna change right this second because it's gonna stay where it is. But I do need to drop in, right? Because at one second is where this thing pauses, right there at one second. So I wanna make sure that my logo, my overlay logo doesn't appear until that one second period. So let's go in here and I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna drop an opacity and then I'm gonna crank this thing down, right? Crank my opacity down. So my animation still comes in, right? So you can see it. So the importance of kind of storyboarding this thing. So I'm gonna animate this thing in. And then I think maybe just shy of one second, cause I want it to pulse a little bit. So I think I'm gonna actually add a keyframe that is zero. And then 
I'm going to add another keyframe at one second. I'm going to crank this thing up to 100 just so that you can see what's going on. So let's. So there it is. So you see that thing? It comes in, it pauses for a second. That thing gets an overlay, so it gets a very slight burst of color. So you're going to notice when they're on top of each other, right there, it highlights itself and then this thing disappears, kind of makes its way down. And I think I wanted to do that. I don't think, I think I want that to be a copy of itself. I could move the positioning of that last keyframe in my first version and make it stay exactly where it is and just have it fade out. But I do think I want that kind of mirrored like overlay where this thing's kind of disappearing off into the distance and have the one stay in its position. All right, so we have that, it's our opacity. And now I'm gonna go in and I think I wanna drop a scale on this one. So we'll have it be 100%. And then at the one second, we're gonna drop another scale in right there. And then I think I wanna have this thing just burst off the page at, oh gosh, two or three seconds. I'm, I, I'm gonna make it explode like completely off the page, really big so it's a watermark over the screen. But let's stick with the two second theme because we were talking about that as a kind of our intro being two seconds. So let's just keep it like that. And I'm gonna blow this thing up. I'm gonna blow it up. And I'm going to, okay, so we're blowing it up. So you can see now it makes a copy, boom. And now I'm gonna drop another marker at two seconds. I'm gonna crank the opacity to zero. And now you're gonna see all of this overlay happening. So zoom down and burst out. Okay, so now we gotta get in here, all right? We want to ease this thing, All right? So it's scale eases. And then let's even do this. I'm a big proponent of making sure everything has an ease to it. If I am going to do a speed in, speed out kind of scenario. So we've got that, we have the space bar, boom, it pulsates, disappears. All right, beautiful. And so now let's take this layer. I'm gonna shrink that down or shrink this down. So we have our two logos. So there it is, right? There is our logo placement. You can see if, if you were to have downloaded a uh, a, a template, maybe After Effects has a template or you downloaded a template uh, that was free that you really like the intro animation that someone had created for After Effects or a client gives you a, uh, a pre-built animation that they wanna swap some logos out or replace an image in, you can double click on your layer assets and you'll actually get inside the nesting of that asset. So if I had a different asset over here, I could drag and drop it right on top of this and it will replace the logo in the entire animation across the entire timeline. So think of it as an object nested inside of an object. So uh, if you ever download a template, you ever get a file from a client that might be Premiere or After Effects, you can always go inside the symbol or the asset and replace the asset with something new, a different color of the logo, maybe New Balance, they wanted to be white in the first campaign, same campaign, but just swap it out for red or blue or black or something like that. Once you build this sequencing, build this composition, uh, build these assets in the timeline in a certain sequence, you can just replace the asset and then it'll do the exact same thing. We could double click on the video clip 
and replace the video if it was in After Effects and it would just do a different intro screen with rain instead of sunshine or waves crashing instead of lava, like whatever we wanted to do. So that's the importance of having the source file, keeping the After Effects file, keeping the Premiere file, saving them in a root directory or client folder with an asset folder where you can add new assets. Remember, these are linked. So once we swap them, replace them, import new things. If I replaced the New Balance logo in my asset folder with the same name, but the logo as a new color, it would replace this asset nested in this video and change the entire video to the new color. So it's just important to know that these things are embedded in, but linked to the asset folder so that you can swap things out if you need to, color combinations, things like that. So uh, this thing's in here twice. And so let's close that, get back into our composition. There it is. We got the zoom, the pulsation happening here of our video clip. And I think now I want to bring one in that ripples. Uh, there's lots of effects over here. Uh, I like some of the transition effects just to kind of show you what's happening. Uh, so for the sake of seeing the timeline, I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring a new layer in. I'm going to drop that in the middle. And so there it is in its small scale. I don't know that I need it to be huge. So let's tuck these back in, maybe make it a skosh bigger, but I do want the differentiation between that pulsation and what is left. So there it is, logo number three. All right, so we have our two, and I'm doing it all just with one logo so that you can kind of see the simplicity of having one asset and being able to do lots of things with it. All right, so. Now we have this asset in here. So I'm gonna shrink that. Uh, I'm gonna get in. Uh, let's do the, I'm only gonna do an opacity change. I'm gonna keep it exactly where it is. So I'm just gonna fade it in at one second and keep it there. And so let's add an opacity anchor there. Crank it down to zero. And then at one second, I'm gonna drop in and give it 100% opacity. So this third one, get the space bar. Comes in and look at how complicated the overlay is now. That one starts fading in, this one pulsates, drops on top of it. All right, so that's, that's that. Okay, now I'm going to, so just for the sake of the process, let's tuck that up for a minute, lock that, lock that, so that we're only in this particular object or this particular layer. And now I'm gonna go in and let's expand it just for the sake of expanding it. So you can see that this is where we're at in this section. Now we're gonna go over to uh, animation presets. And so the beauty about a lot of what Adobe does is they spend a lot of time, energy and effort building templates, building filter effects, building applications that are pre-coded, pre-built in their programs that kind of help guide you towards some of the kind of basic things that someone may want to do inside any given program that has been professionally applied over the years that designers have shared their library assets and Adobe has either built themselves based on things they've seen or even just added assets that designers that have attributed or helped out the application over its development into some library assets that uh, those that are new to the program or learning the process can kind of use. Well, animation presets are awesome because it gives you all kinds of presets. And so I'm just gonna expand each of the windows here uh, so you can kind of see that it has all kinds of background. I mean, look at some of these things, light lightning bend applied, uh, magma fog lights, uh, kind of circuits and cinders and blocks and pixels and speed and smoke and all kinds of things for backgrounds that you can drop in as presets. You'll see transitions. So like block dissolves, uh, dissolve ripples, sand, 
unmelt vapor. Well, I happen to like ripple, dissolve ripple, because I'm already fading this thing in. Uh, so dropping a, a, a transform preset. So you see how I can just drop that on there and take a look what happens. It's, you see how it's, it's actually rippling as it places itself on there. So let's do this just so that you can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna hide these two and then I'm gonna hit the space bar and it does kind of that wavy ripple effect. So there it is. And you'll notice that the ripple right now has a wave speed of one. So let's crank it up to two. And you'll really see the ripple effect. And you can play around with uh, wave speed, height, width. You can kind of change if it's a center ripple or ripples from an edge. You can kind of change the radius of the ripple, but it's a really cool preset when you're doing some like basic branding to kind of bring this thing and kind of drizzle it or ripple it on top of it. So let's expand that back out. And you'll notice the effect has its own menu, right? Has its own uh, ripple, it's dissolve master control, which right now is set to, you can see this, the one second, which is what I had set up here. And then I adjusted it to have a transition of two seconds. Uh, so let's go in and tuck that in and tuck this in. And then we can return these on and hit our space bar. And there it is. So it gets a really dramatic effect going on there. And so just for the sake of the process, let's take it, we'll lock this one. Let's go back to our, so let's close that control, go back to drop a new asset on. So you'll see logo number four. Let's go up to our animation presets. And just for the sake of the process, let's drop a lightning up bend on it. So you see that on the logo. And so now let's get in, scale it up a little bit. And it will just ripple and ripple. All right, so let's get in here, take a look at our fractal noise. Maybe we wanna crank that down just a skosh. You can really see the effect. Let's do that. Let's do transform. So let's fade this thing in. So let's do an opacity of zero. And then it will have that ripple at one second. So I wanna do, so watch what I do. I wanna have this ripple to start with and then it's gonna highlight. So like at, I don't know, 20 seconds or so, drop that in with an opacity of zero. And then I want it like a second and a half or so. Let's drop an opacity of 100%. So I'm just playing around with the story. So you see how it ripples and then watch. It starts to highlight as the pulse goes across it. And then I'm gonna do, so see it, it's panning across it at just about three seconds. I'm gonna do that and right when it stops pulsating, which is right there, I wanna drop in an opacity of zero. I'm gonna select all those. And I'm going to ease it. 
And so now let's just tuck this. So everything is tucked in. So you could see it, boy, look how good that is. So it animates down, it pulsates, it highlights itself. You could see it pulse through the logo. It's all the nuances of just playing around with once you understand the application of uh, all of these different, so transitions, you've got uh, behaviors, so check this out. You got things like wiggle. You can wiggle the scale. You can uh, do like a gelatin effect. You can shear it. You can do a opacity flash, like a blink. You can do a fade in, fade out in a millisecond. So it's like, it pulsates real quick. You can kind of drift it across over time. I mean, there's just so many really cool things. So what I do when I was first learning kind of the After Effects process, I would drop a static Im image on zero comma zero or zero frames, go through each of the effect folders and sub elements and drop them onto my object just to see what they do. So you can get a comfort level with what's happening here uh, from a preset auto background, auto behavior. So you have a pulsating light, you have things like wiggles and uh, scaling and drifting and uh, kind of a millisecond flash or fade in, fade out. So I could bring this logo in, in like a yellow. So after it does the lightning scroll in essence, I could blink it in like a gold or a black or any color I wanted as like a pulsating color at the end of that kind of a lightning pan effect. I mean, there's just so many really cool things here that you just have to play around with uh, in order to see. Even Cractal is really interesting, even though it has a pretty deep depth of negative space. So you kind of have to adjust kind of the settings of the depth of it in order to get the effect that you might want or a night vision effect. I mean, there's really uh, lighting leaks, which means it cracks a little bit randomly like it would in an old film grain. Uh, you've got all kinds of transforms. You have some of the basic things you would have seen from Photoshop, noise and grain, distort. Uh, matte's interesting because it allows you to give a bubble matte finish effect. You can do uh, uh, channels like you would do uh, with uh, camera filters, uh, kind of affecting it. You can affect per, uh, perspective. Uh, things like stylize, you've probably seen before from both Illustrator and Photoshop. So you can stylize like a brush, uh, brush stroke or uh, emboss or mosaic or posterize or threshold, any of the things you've probably seen as a style effect in Photoshop or Illustrator. But it's really, it's based on uh, a pre-plan, understanding how long your video clip is, how long your intro is gonna be, what your logo looks like, what the kind of treatment is it looks like. But once you understand layer static image import, timeline and keyframing and both transform and effect adjustments, you can really do some really cool basic stuff, which you can see right here. I mean, we did this over the course of 15 minutes or so. So you can really see that highlight come across it as I adjusted the opacity. Instead of it being black, you now it starts black, but it highlights it as white by changing the opacity. Okay, so we have our clip dropped in. Uh, we've got our logo. We actually, in essence, have four copies of the same asset with different attributes applied to it. We're going to go ahead and save this. Uh, once I have it saved, I'm going to go ahead and close this uh, just so that you can now see. Let's go into, let's go into our Premiere. So let's go into our uh, Premiere file, which is what we were working on last week. And I'm just going to drop it into Premiere. And I'm going to open up our file so that we can bring in our now After Effects logo animation so you can kind of see what's going on. Took us, you know, the intro kind of lecture and beginning animation about an hour into the lecture here, but we'll go about 15 minutes. I'm gonna intro in our animation. So right now we have our, anim our video clip done. So we're gonna expand this a little bit. I'm gonna pinch this stuff in a little bit just so that we can see what's going on. 
All right, so we have our video clips and stuff here. Let's pinch this up a little bit. Uh, I got to turn down my audio, sorry. We have audio going on right now with my, my verbiage, right? So there's our logo that we imported in. Our static image, I just dropped that in as a space holder. So let's blow this thing out so I know what I have going on here. I'm actually gonna get rid of my logo. I just selected and deleted it because I want to bring in my new asset, which is my logo intro. So I have my logo built in here now, and I'm going to take it. I'm just going to drop it in. Give it a second for its rendering. And there is my logo animation. And so now let's take this thing. I'm gonna pinch this thing in. So I need it to be about four seconds or so. Right around there. And so now, Let's expand this, take our playhead back to the beginning. I turned my sound off, so. And there is my animation. And there it is, drops off. And then the end of my thing here is we got now, right? So let's see what I got going on from a, yeah, I got to shrink in the we got now. But it's only going to stay there for a few seconds. Well, that's my audio clip that I recorded. So just for the sake of best practice, I'm going to drop it to the end of my audio clip, even though my audio clip was a one shot deal. Okay, so I got that now. All right, so we got that. There's our animation going. We got now is the end. So let's pan this back down a little bit. So there's my we got now. So now I'm going to go back into After Effects. And let's get, uh, let's get we got now, so we need, let's see if we can find, I wanna start a new project, new composition and call it outro and B for new balance, click okay. And now let's go over to, uh, let's see if there's any additional logo branding in brands of the world that I might be able to use. So let's go to brands of the world. Let's go back into New Balance. Let's just see. I think I'm going to grab this thing. Let's just make sure that I got the right one. So let's grab that down because we're going to do, oh, that's not the one I want. 
That is not the one I want. Let's close that. Let's clear that so that we make sure we get this one. <laughs> I want this one because I want the elongated phrase at the end of it. Let's see if that is an option. Interesting, it's giving me the same one. So let's see here. Let me do this. Let's do, I'm just gonna do Twitter. I wanted to do a social media icon anyway, because I want it to be like, a, let's click on this. It'll let me download this. I want to do like a social media post at the end just to give it a little, little Twitter icon. Let's see if downloads, see if it's in downloads. Oh, not yet. Let's see if it'll let me grab this thing. If not, I can do a PNG file of it. It's not a deal breaker, but something's going a little weird here. Let's see here. Uh, Brands of the world has all these has all these ads popped up. So sometimes it blocks us from downloading. It gets stuck in that waiting for, waiting, 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 res res resolving host, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so just to keep us moving here, Let's go Twitter icon PNG. We need this one. So we'll just dump that down there. Just to show you that a PNG will work in the After Effects environment. So we'll drop that in there. We'll, uh, we got our new composition already. Let's take our Twitter. Drop it into our assets, drop it there. Now remember that we have the we got now phrase. So I've got to move this thing up. And so now let's do that. All right, fine. Just for the sake of presets, let's do a, Let's do a transition. Do vapor. Drop that on there. And you'll see the vapor. Okay, awesome. And let's save that. And we're gonna name this as NB outro save that and then we'll take uh, NB outro drop that it's going to confirm the asset remember that's the importance to the asset folder let's give it a second now I am bouncing between a few programs so my uh, iMac is a little bit like, what are you doing? Hence the reason I recommended the, the working on some of this stuff from wherever you're saving your final thing because it can get a bit brutal. So there's my, look at how cool that is. I mean, you don't even need to know a lot about the programs to really do some very cool stuff. Let's take this and snap it back. But look at that. So now if we just pulsate, highlight, runner, clips, we got now, end of story.
And the last thing I would probably do would uh, do the created by, because a lot of the social media things nowadays uh, are all into the, you know, the created by author thing going on. So it's kind of this kind of cult following. If you have a certain producer or someone that does certain styles of clips, uh, kind of influencer-ish from a creative environment, you'll see like uh, uh, created by or, you know, like the graffiti art artist uh, that's, that's tagging images all over the place. Of course, they wanna highlight him or her, although they think it's a him. Uh, if uh, Banksy, if, uh, if something is created. So I traditionally will put down the bottom here, created by or, uh, or thanks to, or a web address or some kind of direction at the end of it. But you can see how a little bit of knowledge on multiple programs can really go a long way. And remember, these are short clips. I mean, we're trying to keep this thing. It ended up being about 12 seconds, but uh, you'll notice on the New Balance uh, Twitter page, they have about 12 to 15 second videos, but I really do try to keep them very short. People have a seven second attention span. So you gotta try to capture that thing in a very quick moment so that you can you know, create something that's memorable and brandable and repeatable. And remember now all of our assets are nested based on our root directory folder. So all of these things are interlinked. So now if I replace my New Balance logo inside of this asset area, like if I went in and took the converted logo and it was red and renamed it to New Balance logo white, even though it was red, it would replace that logo in every asset that was built based on that asset. So if I'm building something for a client sometimes, I'll make a New Balance uh, campaign one folder and then I'll duplicate that folder and call it New Balance campaign two. So when I replace the assets, it keeps my original campaign one with the white logo and the clips that I did. And then I can easily make a duplicate of the video swap out the assets of the video, keeping the timeline sequencing and effects, and it will recreate the, the video again with the new assets. It will just link swap them. All of these behaviors are attached to the asset, but they are separate. So if I replace any of the elements of the asset, it will replace it in the video. So if I make a red logo and I make a duplicate of this client folder, call it New Balance Campaign 1, make a duplicate of the folder, call it New Balance Campaign 2, and I change the logo, it will replace it in everything I built for that client, the uh, uh, Premiere projects, the After Effects projects, all of those source files that have linkage included, it will replace them in those elements. So just know that, which is awesome because if you're organized with your client folders, your root directories, so I have a new balance folder and inside the new balance folder, I have a folder called campaign one and then another folder called campaign two built in the same sequencing timelines. If they change their logo, they wanna tweak a color, they wanna swap out the runner for a kayaker. I can do all of those things. I can swap out these assets and it will swap out the elements in my video campaign. So build it once, replicate it over and over again. I can't kind of emphasize that enough. Web design companies build wireframes with the language already built into the websites so that all they have to do is swap the assets and the template changes. In video editing, they, Designers spend a lot of time creating transitions, layer effects, creating these 30 second sequences. They can make a duplicate of that thing, replace all the assets per the client, and it will replicate the 30 seconds with the new elements for the new client. Not that you wanna have the same filter effects, same transitions, same things for multiple clients, but you get the idea that you can do a, uh, a a, a look and feel. You can generate your own look and feel. 
the ability to brand yourself based on how you do things that may be different from creative thinker one to creative thinker two is really important. I have a photographer friend who has made a very good living at real estate photography. Not only has he evolved with technology, so he was the first to do drone photography. Uh, he's got uh, tripods that do 3D photos by doing stills in a transition of his tripod. So it changes the positioning of the camera and he just click, 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 takes a photo at all the different positioning, uploads it to a software and it creates a 3D pan of the inside and outside of a property that he's trying to support selling. So he does do the latest technology. But what's genius about him is he built a sequencing uh, effect in Photoshop where all of his images look exactly the same when he uploads them and does a batch replication of the images. So he could take 50 photos of a house and hit one batch process in Photoshop and every single one of the 50 photos will be super enhanced, super adjusted, filter effects, everything that he traditionally does to make an image look great, he does in a batch process in Photoshop, which means when he gives those to uh, a realtor to put up there on Zillow or any of the real estate sites for people to preview, you can immediately tell which images were shot by Jim. It's the exact same effect on the image across every image of every project of every client he ever shot. Build it once, replicate it over and over again. So hopefully this demo, hour and 15 minutes or so, has got shown you the powers of After Effects, the time, the processes, how the timeline keyframes transition works, how you import it into Premiere, how you build a 30 second mini social media clip using Premiere video editing and vector based animation uh, techniques and After Effects, merge them together in what would become one MP4 campaign, one vi video campaign. This is an amazing tool to add to your resume for going forward for your current employer or the dream employer. They're always looking for an added asset and video animation is certainly an added asset. Yes, this could be a 30 minute video because you always wanted to make your mini movie and you could animate the intro, animate out the outro, shoot your own video scenes, splice them all together in your timeline and make it an actual full length quotation mark movie. But I want you to see the power of it from a social branding standpoint for visual communicators, that it's a great tool for between seven to 10, down to three second, all the way up to 15, 20, 30 second clips to really grab the attention and sell a product or service. So this week is just a few intro chapters of After Effects. Know how to book, know anything. Know that next week, is our post course project, which means we'll have one project that will last all week long, open lab, open process, where you're gonna create one video brandable campaign selling a product or service in a very short video clip. So what I've done the last two weeks in essence is your post course project. The books are granular supplements so you can learn a few mini nuances of the programs beyond a process scratch the surface. So everyone has done so well so far. The chapter assignments, following along, using the correct process for building in a video environment. So now we're gonna take it kind of to the finish line here. So uh, good luck working this week. Send me an email if you have any problems with the process. Uh, we're gonna try to hopefully have a deadline of Sunday night at midnight to have your first three learning modules completed. Have your book assignments completed, have scratched the surface of both Premiere and After Effects and have a unified project. Because next week I wanna give a full week to build a mini final project. The final projects, the post-course projects are really important because in essence, they are your portfolio case study. So I wanna give you a maximum amount of time. So at the end of the programs, when you're putting your portfolios together, you have a beautiful campaign built through Premiere and After Effects as a joint venture. So that way if someone contacts you and says, boy, I would love to have you do a social media video for me that I can post on YouTube and put out on Twitter, uh, put on my uh, website, 
you know, can you do it? You can say, yeah, I did this as my post course project for animation too. And look at the product animation I built uh, that I can do something like this for you. So let's keep the process going well. Let's keep our, uh, our uh, uh, kind of timeline going so that we can have a nice week to kind of build our kind of post-course project. So everyone have a great week. Thank you for logging on, logging on on time, uh, watching the demonstration. Hopefully this inspires you to import some images, uh, some logos and uh, After Effects and just play around with the effects menu, drop one in, see what happens to it, adjust it in the effects controls, delete it, try the next one and go through that library and try all kinds of different things. There are gonna be some things you gravitate towards that you're gonna to wanna to use going forward. Obviously there's hundreds in there. So it's not like you're gonna use them all, but I think there'll definitely be some things that really catch your eye and you can see the use of them, but feed your brain with the process, learn some of the effects because they are cross-platform and the terminology and what they do are consistent across multiple applications. I hope everyone has a great week. I hope everyone's healthy, stay safe. You know, we're kind of still in this COVID thing going on. So just be well, have a good week. Um, and stay in communication as you're working through your projects. So I kind of know where you're at and, uh, and we'll do our post-course project next week. All right, gang, have a good week.